looking for something. A new way, a new understanding, a connection, some comfort. You've got questions, and Light on Living puts the spotlight on all the answers so you can shine. Lift and lighten the load of life's challenges and learn simple and easy ways to live a healthy, happy life. You'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. You're invited to hear new, see different, and feel more as Lisa shines the light on living. Hello, hello. Welcome everyone to Light on Living. I'm your host, Lisa Berry. And as always, definitely showing up today to give you reasons to feel better. And today's whole theme, our whole topic, I cannot imagine a more relieving kind of feel better way as when we shed something, like we take the weight off our shoulders. We, you know, just drop this whole load that we've been carrying around, whether it's something that you're you know, you're worried about, like worried, uh, at pain, like you've been suffering or just, you're just tired. You're just fed up with something that keeps showing up in your life and it's time for something new. So today is all about the awakening and the shedding. And I have the most perfect guest as always <laughs> to help me talk about this and, and help inspire you. I'm going to read, um, my guest, my lovely guest, a little bit of her bio, but it's, at, well, I want to first of all, welcome Abby, uh, Abby Aguilera to the show. Hello, Abby. Hello, Lisa. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me on your show. I just want to say it is an honor, not just to be on your show, but also to know you personally. Um, you are a light in this Aww. world. So thank you for having me. Oh, thank you. And everybody, as I read this bio, I just want to share that I had the pleasure of meeting Abby twice in person, but because we, well, she's in LA. Well, she just travels the world, to be honest with you. She goes everywhere, but she has blown up to, um, she was at a conference in Toronto when we got to meet in person. And then off we went um, a few months later to Idaho, where she hosts, you'll learn all about this, but um, where Abby created and held and hosted and did everything for One Soul Expo. She is a, a pure light herself. So I just want to share a bit about Abby here. Abby Aguilera is highly motivated and fully engaged in helping those who are ready to improve and transform their lives. Known for her powerful, very powerful, uplifting energy, inspirational speeches, it's off the charts, you guys, you can't wait to hear this, <laughs> and her transformation transformational life coaching. She has dedicated many years to put the knowledge and skills behind her gifts to offer value and encouragement to those who cross her path. She has been featured for her work in national TV, blogs, Univision Radio, local radio, Ohm Times Radio, and magazines such as the Eden Magazine, Boise Lifestyle Magazine, Hedra News, and more. And I'm going to skip to this lovely part here. Um, Abby is an award-winning hypnotherapist, a transformational speaker, a quantum healer, past life regressionist, a life coach entrepreneur who has been trained directly by Jack Canfield, New York Times best-selling author of Chicken Soup for the Soul, the, and the late... Dolores Cannon, Brian Weiss, and more. Also, really fun thing, um, Abby has written a book, and it's it was, you have to share with me a little bit about this. Um, you co-authored, you, it says, Abby is known for a creative expression as a writer and singer-songwriter, because we're going to be enjoying two of her songs today. And in 2018, she released a book that she co-authored in Spanish to inspire and uplift the lives of many women. A Abby, what is the name of that book? It's called a binational anthology of Latin women. Oh, what's in it? Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, because it, it didn't happen. I was like, oh, I wish I would have been able to share that. So yes, we'll definitely put a picture up for you guys of that book, and you can always grab your copy there. But Abby, just from the day one that I've seen you, that I've met you, that I the, everything that you do, it's you are one of the most full of love people I have ever seen. It's just, do you feel like you are? Do you know that you are? <laughs> Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And the songs and music. Now, I find you, the the fact that you do the past life regression, I find is super helpful in these kind of things. I have. I'm going to start off with my question about um, shedding, the shedding, and, and what that means because. I when I think about somebody shedding something, I, I do. I really feel like it's because. What, my question is, do we decide when we want an awakening or does it happen just because we get to a point? <laughs> like, yeah, I want to decide, do you? What, how does that happen? 
Yeah, wouldn't that be nice, Lisa? <laughs> 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 Let me decide what I have by awakening and what it is. Yes. <laughs> Can we schedule it? No, I mean, I use my sense of humor a lot because the universe has a sense of humor. I think God has yes. a sense of humor, and we should too, by the way, because yes. life can be hard enough at times, and we need sense of humor. We need our faith to get us through the hard times. Now, that being said, that no, my dear beloved Lisa, we cannot. <laughs> At least not in, the, in this conscious space. Uh, we cannot necessarily schedule the awakening. I think we plan it before we incarnate. I think there are, and I tell you this because um, astrologers worked on my astral chart. And there was this one time in my life, before I even knew it was going to get dense, <laughs> They told me you're about to go through a very important phase where you're going to be transitioning and it's going to be going to be a little hectic. And I was like, well, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm having the time of my life. Well, that changed quickly. (laughs) And it was uh, then, just like they had said. So I believe it is in our astrology at some point uh, when we go deeply into it that there are certain – predestined events in our lives that are meant to shape us and lead us towards we are meant towards where we are meant to be at and they will direct us towards mm-hmm. who we are meant to be. But some processes are not necessarily found. And that's one thing I would like to emphasize today is that we all talk about the shedding, you know, shedding things we don't like about your, ourselves or things that we want to change. What nobody really talks about is the things that are shed from our lives that we are not ready to shed, the oh. things that that change when we were not even thinking about changing them. And that's when the process gets interesting because we will have to deal with our resistance in the mm. morning process of that shedding. Oh, that is so true. Okay, he's right, because all of a sudden something happens. You're like, no, 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 I didn't want that to go. That, that I wanted, <laughs> you know, or, or, you were, or you're not ready to. Um, I love that you use the word resistance that came up, because at first I was like, I wonder if if shedding is, is shedding the resistance. But it, it sounds like resistance is maybe of something that happens after the shedding. Does that? Well, no, it happens during the shedding. During. Um, yeah, it happens during, it happens after. You have to understand there is a part of us, though, that is not just preciously awakened, but we also have another part inside ourselves that is still a child. And we all have that, Lisa, all of us. And that child is not going to want to let go of what it's known to us or known to him or her, I mean, it's the, the inner child wants to stay safe and protected. The, the subconscious mind, if you will, is a child, really, before mm-hmm. it has been reprogrammed to become the grown-up, evolved adult that happens through awakening. But before that, it's going to act like a child. And every time we want to change it, and, and you think about it, I mean, sometimes you have to get up early and it's like, no, I don't want to get up right now. Um, what happens if there's going to be financial struggle? What happens if there's going to be hunger? From an adult point of view, you understand it well. It's a hard time. We're going to, you know, get through this. But the inner child is going to pout. It's going to be like, no, I don't want to go through this. This is not, I I want to eat something else for breakfast. You know, this doesn't cut it for me. Uh, My bank account is laughing at me and I'm not liking it. Um, it's, it's, It's a process. And We have to understand that even if from an intellectual point of view or spiritual point of view, we we have heard about the shedding and we sort of understanding, understand that, I'm sorry, we have to come to a different place of a fuller, deeper understanding of it and of the process so that we can navigate through it knowing that it is not necessarily going to be fun. We cannot expect uh, this part of the journey to be the most exciting because awakening will be exciting once we have let go and surrendered. Mm. So not our plan, but God's plan, the universe plan, the greater plan that has been planned before we even incarnated, and that in order to, to, to embrace and to fully embody that plan, 
we're gonna have to let go of our plan completely uh you know and that is when it gets you need your assistance because you're like wait a minute no okay this is not going according to plan because i thought i was going to be this or i thought i was going to be doing that i thought i was going to be doing it with this other person i'm and i was going to be doing it in the city for example and things co will completely change and turn your world upside down only to show you that the only true power you have is to become the truest version of yourself and to start communicating with God, the universe, and surrendering to their plan. Because truthfully, at some point and from some level, their plan and God's plan is always going to be better than ours. Than ours. But mm -hmm. the scariest part of it is surrendering ourselves to the unknown. That's why uh, the awakening and the shedding could take longer if we don't understand it, because the longer we hold on to that which no longer serves us, to the old lifestyle, to the old friend circle, to um, everything that we have known, the longer, the longer we hold on to it, the longer the process is going to take. So. You just reminded me of that. And great analogy. Thank you for sharing that about the inner, not the inner child, but the, that there's a little child inside. And when you're saying about, uh, you know, we can look at it as adults if we've been through some experiences. But I'm remembering, you know, when I'm, I was little and I one of my tooth became loose. I mean, at the time, in my first tooth, you know, you're going to lose it. All you experience is the pain and the wiggling. And you're trying to like, no, these are my teeth. I want them. Like you can't understand as a child that, well, this will fall out, but then you'll get your big teeth, your adult teeth. And I, I you made me just remember <laughs> that because that's, it's so hard for as a child to understand that, no, I've, this is, this is supposed to happen and it does hurt and there can be some uncomfortability, but then something new and bigger and, and stronger is going to come in its place. And it's kind of like a new tooth is the awakening. <laughs> yeah, no, and, and not always is right away because we think, oh, well, right. I just went through the hardest time of my life. It's time for my payout. You know, right. I, I went through it. So where is my prize? You know, where is uh, <laughs> my right. award waiting? And it may take a while because the truth is it's going to take as long as it's going to take while we are going through our process. And most importantly, it's not gonna come before we embody mm -hmm. our right. full wholesome self. Like if we are not there yet, it's not gonna come. And stressing right. about it or, or worrying about it or suffering or you know whatever, it's not gonna make it because there is a someone that we are supposed to embody, a truth mm -hmm. we're supposed to own. And if we haven't fully or completely, if, uh, if we are not fully developed, it's almost like a cake that is in the oven and it's not ready. As much as you want to take it out, if it's not ready, it's not ready. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. That's a good one. That's so true. You know, how many times have we done that? We've been, you know, checking us or checking on something. It's not there, so I want it now. <laughs> we get so anxious mm -hmm. for, for something new. And I think an, um, an awakening, like when I hear that word, when I used to hear that word, I always thought it had to be grandiose. Like I was like, oh, they've had an awakening or I'm, I'm awake. But can they be small? Like, what do you mean? Like, um, like I think of an awakening being such a grand, huge, my whole world has changed, but can there be s smaller, um, not so life-changing awakenings? Like just a thought that now we think differently, oh. a different perception. Can it be, is that considered an awakening as well? Absolutely. An awakening can even be, just like you said, a change in perception, but a complete change in perception, even if it comes from a small truth. Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest awakening that can happen within us without having our world turned upside down is the understanding that this world does not revolve around us, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we are not here to just, we're not here experiencing it only um by ourselves because i think one of the greatest truths that we ever experience as we are awakening is when we are in the i and we transition to the we and the way this happens is yes i'm going through a hard time maybe i'm struggling whatever but when you understand that there are more people also suffering also it could even be in your own home and I remember this, I, I went through a, a loss of one of my beloved pets 
which to me was like mm-hmm. a relative, by the way. Yeah. And I was grieving like if it were my child. And I was grieving and I felt it was so personal. And then when I looked around, Lisa, I saw that everybody in my house was hurting just oh. as much. It wasn't me only going through that loss. We were all going through the loss just from a different place of perspective, a different place, you know, the person that felt guilty because it happened, the person that felt should have been here. I mean, but at the same time, it wasn't just my loss. It wasn't me in the middle of the world suffering this. It was all of us going through it. So even just opening my eyes to the fact that we were, it was happening to all of us, then it moved me from my, I am going through this to we are going through this. And that happens. That's a change of perception that will change your life because in anybody's life, and it's not just about joy or, or loss or, or grieving, but in every way, when we move through why this is happening to me to what is this teaching me or why am I going through this when we can shift to it's happening worldwide, it's happening to all of us. Maybe this is a situation that we can all unite to change. So even one change of perception from the I to the we can be an awakening in and of itself. You know, I lo- thank you for sharing that. That and, and I'm sorry that you had that loss, but I'm also so, so happy that you had someone, a furry baby who meant that much to everybody. And um, as we're going to slip away to commercial in about 10 seconds, but um, just, to, just the the love of coming together and going from I to we is certainly a lot of strength in that. So when we come back, everybody, we're going to continue this about the awakening, the shedding, and here's some music. Best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Home Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. We have all read about or heard about becoming more spiritual, about working with our energy, the awakening, the shift, about being our authentic selves, living our purpose, reaching our true potential. The challenge doesn't lie in the knowledge, it lies in the execution. The struggle becomes connecting to that limitless self-healing part that each one of us has and gaining control of who we truly are. Hi, I'm Dr. Reverend Aisha Hogan, and you are invited to join me on a master's practice on Ohm Times, Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard and 11 a.m. Pacific Standard. Hi, it's Olivia Munn with my shelter pets, Frankie and Chance. Say hi, guys. <coughs> When I adopted them, I discovered that they both have incredible personalities. Chance's sole purpose in life is to love and to be loved. Frankie is a little bit of a scoundrel and always entertaining. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Adopt pure love at theshelterpetproject.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council, the Humane Society of the United States, and Maddie's Fund. Welcome back, everybody. Um, I just want to recap that we are we are talking about the awakening and the shedding, and we are here with Abby Aguilera. I, I say it so perfectly in my head. I can't believe I doesn't come out. <laughs> Abby, oh my goodness, Abby Aguilera. Yes, okay. <laughs> and and as we uh, you just shared with us, and I love that. That sometimes we can think it's that we are only going through struggle, and that we this life is happening to me and it's just me. But my goodness, when we do shift our perspective from I to we, there is strength in there. And I want to ask you, Abby, when we're thinking of it's just being me and I'm doing this, I I feel like that can feel very lonely, like I'm alone. And 
it's hard to gather strength and courage from there. How do we shift? How can how can we? Is it just a choice that we can shift from thinking about I to we? Well, yeah, absolutely, because that's why it's such a it may, it can make such a big difference, you know. And even <clears throat> it has been proven for some people, for example, that even joining a group that shares the same experience can be life changing because. You think about it when we are mourning, when we are suffering, we tend to isolate ourselves. So those who are listening, please yes. do not do that as much as you want to do that. You can give yourself some time for processing, but the the longer you keep yourself inside, the harder it's going to be to rejoin society, to rejoin the world, to find joy again. So try to go outside, try to smell the roses, try to try different things, even if it's one different food that week or go for a walk. Take yourself outside. Join the group that's sharing that experience. Because if you go to a group, for example, that's talking about grieving, and you realize there's 25 people that are grieving, well, in and of itself, it's going to give you that perception that, yeah, well, I'm not the only person grieving. You know, there are mm -hmm. other people listening and suffering. And one thing that happens, and it's happened to me many times, is when I'm going through something and I think it's, like, super dense, and all of a sudden I listen to somebody, someone else's story, and I'm like, ah, Mine is actually not that bad. That is horrible. How is that person smiling? How is that person surviving? And then they they give me this inspiration, this strength. I mean, some of my inspiration comes from me and some comes from people who have gone through great struggles and hurdles and they're smiling and they're helping other people and you're like, wow, you know, that is amazing. <clears throat> so putting yourself in, in, in places, uh, Lisa, sorry, but in your safe in places where others, where you could help others, for example, volunteering, um, going out, doing different things, it's going to take you when you do it with other people from the I to the we, because you will witness other people suffering mm -hmm. and, and the things that make, make them get through it with joy. And I love that this, you, getting through, yeah, can you imagine that you're going through the hardest thing, you maybe don't even think you can get through it, but then somebody helps you and it ends up being like what you just said, I love that, helping to get it through it with joy. Like, and um, you, one of your songs, so we're going to, we're going to play a song, but I, I feel like um, when everybody hears a song, like honestly, to be able to look, it's hard though. When you're in a situation, you think this is the hardest, most horrible thing I'm in, I and, you're, and somebody else is telling me that I'm going to get through this with joy, but it can happen. And we, um, we're going to play your, the, the, your, we're going to play two songs, but the first one we're going to do, we're going to have a little bit of a, a rock time here, <laughs> a little bit. But uh, I just love it. It's just a really great song. But can you share um, what this song is about and how helping others, especially in these situations, um, can empower them and help them out? And then, and the full name of the song and and the, you wrote it and everything. <laughs> Thank you. And and that was one of my experiences. Um, we choose how we go through something. If you think about it, if you're going to go through something and you get, you didn't get to choose that experience, at least consciously, uh, you may have looked subconsciously or before you incarnated, but not here, not right now. You may as well go through it with the best attitude. And attitude is going to change everything. You want to change your perception. You want to change your life. Change your attitude. And it's important for us to take responsibility, but we can choose to go through it with a different state of mind at the very least, knowing yeah. that we have survived. Understand that you have survived. You're listening today. The worst things that you said happened to you, guess what? You've already survived them. Now you get to change your life and move forward with the best attitude possible, possible, thinking I'm going to overcome this and then some. And then with my story, with what happened, I'm going to help other people. And helping other people will help you more than you even realize. Yes. This song, uh, Shine Away, I wrote it because... Oh, oh hold on. We, I oh, wanted... no, we'll do the, we're going to do the kiss me, um, the kiss me or leave me. Oh, my goodness, really? Oh, so... <laughs> well, we can do the shine wow. away. Or did you, do, do you want to do the shine away first? Well, um, I think we should do shine away first because it ties better with what we're talking about. Right. Okay, right, right. So let's, let's, okay. let's do the shine away 
and then we'll give you some rock. Oh, okay. <laughs> vintage rock. <laughs> I, uh, let's just see. I, I, I'm going to get um. We'll get the station to see if we've got that in queue there. But the, we'll do Shine Away first, yes. And actually, I yes. love that that says um, Shine Away because I it's making me feel like um, shed away and then shine. And there's the awakening kind of, you know, like you're shedding and then boom, you get to shine. So shine away. Well, Lisa, <laughs> why do you think shedding happens? Oh, oh yeah, well, exactly. Yes. Yes. You're shedding. And there's the why. You up. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. And that's when we get to the meaty stuff, the substance, the goodness. It's like, why is shedding happening? Why? Because if something is unauthentic or in your life and it's blocking you from becoming who you are meant to be, it's got to go. Yes, it's got to go. That's like why that. <laughs> surrendering through that process is the most important thing because you think about it, if there's something that's supposed to be given to you or something you're meant to access and you're holding on to something completely different, it cannot stay. And your hands are full anyway. You have to put it down in order to pick something up mm -hmm. or to have your hands free for that gift to come. And I was working super hard trying to make an expo happen in 19, I'm sorry, in 1990, no, in 2018. It just feels like so many centuries ago. <laughs> I'm kidding. But in 2018, and guess what my mind was doing? My spirit was not wanting to do what, that at all, even though I finished and I completed that process, which is what I thought I was going. And my mind, my spirit was singing songs in my ear to the point oh. to where I had to stop many times and just record them with my voice and then go back into what I was doing because I was suppressing my gift of music, which I've had since I was little. But I, to me, it was more of a hobby. And the lyrics that started coming, it, they went from being just a little earworm to complete full lyrics and <clears throat> shine away as I was going through my own personal awakening, as I was creating um, a big event. And all of a sudden, I start hearing these lyrics of Shine Away. And when I heard them, they made me joyful inside, even as I was going through a lot, because it was true. In life, we're going to go through a lot of sheddings. We're going to go through people breaking our hearts. We're going to go through people putting us down, through people who don't believe in us. But it's only happening because it's polishing the diamond that you are, that we are. It's, it's, it's shedding because there's something inside of you that needs to come out. And it's not come out, it's not going to come out if you're not shedding the old, if you're not shedding what doesn't serve you. And if you're not some way, somehow a little squeezed, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's that you're put under such pressure that you have no other choice but to actually bring about the the death that you have within out into the world mm, i love that okay let's let's get everybody to polish their diamond here so they can be nice and shiny and so this is abby aguilera, aguilera with shine away she's written her own song when the world
Oh, Abby, I just love, it's so uplifting and it's so, oh, it's like wrapped in love and shooting stars from it. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. And you know, this is just uh, acoustic live version um, to have it, but it's true though. And I want people who are listening to know that, and I repeat this often because I think we need to hear it often, that what we are at is temporary. Yes. And that if you believe in yourself, if you work and take action on your dreams and you persevere, doors are going to open and they open faster when we are on the right track. And I say that because it was really funny. I wanted almost like a sign from the universe after I finished writing the song and, and then Kiss Me or Leave Me. And I thought I just want to manifest that if this is part of my path, because it keeps coming. If it keeps coming on, uh, to me, it has got to be or do something with my path. And lo and behold, two months after writing the songs, I got to perform them. Perform them live at the Granada Hill Center for Spiritual Leading where, um, what is this, uh, oh my God, it's Michael Beckwith and yeah. uh, has, has wow. spoken, also uh, many others of my mentors and Lisa Nichols has been there too as well. And I just thought it was really interesting out of all the places in the world that could have been chosen for that particular event that I was part of, the original uh, location got canceled and they moved it to there. And it, I was just blown away that it was that, that place. And I was featured and everything. And I just thought, wow, out of all the places. And I get to sing my original songs and perform them, perform them with an audience. And they were very well received. And I got to speak. And I just felt that maybe this was part of who I fully am. It's not, I could, I could hold on to many titles and say, well, I'm a life coach. Well, I'm, I'm a hypnotherapist. I'm a motivational speaker. I'm a transformational this and that. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how many titles I could possibly hold on to. The truth is I am here to make a difference in the world. And if God chooses to use me to make the difference in the world, whether it is through music, whether it is through speech, whether it is through me counseling somebody, that is who really I am. Uh, who I am is it's, it's not one title. It's not the entire repertoire on my on my bio. It's that I am here with many tools that God has given me and gifted me with. Some that I have worked to polish. But at the end of the day, I needed to embrace the full me that I am, so that I can do what I can do with my special, um, unique abilities. And that is if I if I can give you a message today, Lisa is that, and for all of those who are listening, is that we have to awaken to who we really are and stop hiding parts of ourselves that could be very precious to others. I was so ready to not ever sing my songs and just be who I thought I, I needed to be. But at the expo that you were actually present, um, by the end of um, the second day, I got to sing Shine Away mm. on the piano. And it gave a completely different meaning to everything that I had done. And all of a sudden, the two entire days, the time that got invested, became absolutely 100% worth it. And then I realized that oh. this part of myself that I was depressing was a very important part of myself that I could no longer hide, nor did I want it to, because all of a sudden, it made the inner fire within myself come back and for those three and a half minutes, I came alive and I wanted to live again. And I want to continue living and light on living. <laughs> because, <laughs> and, you know, and that was uh, unintentional, but I wanted to continue living with that fire inside of me. And mm. if I can tell anything to anybody listening out there, is that you need to live your truth. And that song, Shine Away, is about living our truth, letting it shine, and pushing forward no matter what. Mm.
That was absolutely and see everybody. This is exactly why you have such amazing inspirational speeches like you. Oh, all the words that part of your mouth. And you know, it does come from having a warm heart, that fire inside of you so that you are able to shine and burn brightly, you know, just because it does, it matters. Everybody does see it. Now we're going to be slipping away to commercials again, just for the final time. But when we come back, we will have yet again, another beautiful song from yours, a really spicy one. I am excited for that. Oh yeah. And, <laughs> and we will shall continue, continue assisting and helping everybody to go through the awakening and the, sh the shedding and then the awakening with joy. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, AscendingHearts.com. tools to live in your most elevated life. There's no better place to turn than Intuitive Alchemy Radio. Join me, Laura Brown, each Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern for inspiring conversations, live on-the-air readings, and tools to help you build your most aligned, most abundant, and most delicious life. Mother, Mother Ocean. Hi, I'm Jimmy Buffett. West Indian manatees are one of the most unique animals on earth, and we're still finding out so many new things about them. But manatees are endangered, and many of them are killed or injured each year because of watercraft collisions or other human activities. You can help save these gentle marine mammals. For free tips on what you can do, call Save the Manatee Club at 1-800-432-JOIN. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us here on Light on Living. I'm your host, Lisa Berry, and I have the lovely Abby Aguilera with us. And Abby, I just, I'm still laughing, laughing away at the fact that we can't schedule an awakening. I'm like, darn it. <laughs> but but I'm, I'm, I'm definitely feeling like I'm, uh, I'm more welcoming of them. I'm, I'm not as, I, I mean, certainly I think some people think, gosh, I could be afraid of an awakening because like what happens if my whole world changes and it's not for the better? Like, you know, like we have to have some kind of faith um, and not yes. worry about faith it. Yeah. It's crucial. And um, that actually will tie with the second song. Oh, well, look and at I'll that. tell you why. Because <laughs> we go through also so many kinds of awakenings, you know, and as yes. I said, surrendering to not just what is, but also what will be that we may not necessarily be able to see it yet, <clears throat> but believing it's crucial. Because like I said, the most important thing when you think about it is your attitude. If you go somewhere and you meet somebody nice, who's grateful, who's gracious, who is uh, teaching you about faith or embracing you with love, almost like, you know what? I'm clueless, but I love you. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know what's happening, but let's at least go through it with some kind of joy, with dignity, with faith. Is this situation going to steer me away from God or is it going to bring me closer to him? Is it going to steer me away from my truth or closer? 
we don't get mm -hmm. to choose like I, we said when the awakening happens but we do get to choose how we go through it yes. you know in the decisions that we will make so one of the funny things uh when i was going through through my personal process was that even some songs that started coming through weren't necessarily gospel you know like um shine away all of right. a sudden i had this vintage rock song that started coming to me and it felt so empowering because i was actually writing uh, on the binational anthology of identitary writings of Latin women. That's the full name of the book. And it was stories of women from different parts of Latin America that had gone through something in a relationship and how they had overcome it. And I wanted to listen to a song as I was writing that will empower me. And also I was going through something in, 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 in a relationship with uh, somebody that I dated briefly before my now boyfriend. And it was unbelievable because I learned about non-relationships. You're with somebody, but you're not in a relationship. And you're not exclusive. I'm like, what? What do you mean? Isn't that supposed to be like, we're supposed to be at least exclusively dating one at a time? Like, isn't that the way it should be? <laughs> Apparently, it was outdated, at least for that person. But <clears throat> I was like, forget that, you know, move away mm -hmm. from that. But I wanted a song, Lisa, that would empower women because I started listening to songs and I will hear like, uh, how will I live without you and I'm yes. lost without you and all those songs. I was like, no, no, no. I don't want a song that's going to make me feel that if I don't have somebody, I'm going to die. You know, I think the heart can love again. And I wanted a song that will make me feel like I could take care of my emotional, not just my emotional needs, but I could walk away out of, you know, from something that wasn't fulfilling. And when we talked about having faith, and I'm going towards somewhere, it's because, because I walked away from this relationship. I met with now my boyfriend. We've been together um, a little bit over, over a year, and I couldn't be happier because we share the same views. He was going through something similar, so we, we met and we started talking about our experience, and then we're like, wait, we think alike. Thank God we found someone who wants to, you know, be with, just one person and honor each other and it's been a beautiful love story ever since that I would have never found out had I still be hanging on because trust me I could still be hanging on to that one and I'm glad I'm not thank God but I've seen it um I would have never met him or been with him had it not been because I let go of that other person and in my career, and that's why we go back to not just the book that I, that I co-authored, but events that I have been part of in Univision, Telemundo, uh, events that I've created myself where I have not just supported women, but also men, in which I empower them and I help them to step up to their full potential, to say no. And you have no idea, Lisa, how many women and men are holding on, not just for a couple of months, but for years, to the wrong relationship. Yes. And I often think... I wonder who's waiting on the other side of that bridge mm. that they're not willing to cross yet. And that's why I'm passionate about helping them cross that bridge because I know that on the other side, there is something or there is someone waiting for you if you just allow yourself to. <laughs> It's amazing. Yes. That is so hopeful <laughs> for so many. I myself went through that and I'm so glad that it, it took me years to leave as well. And you know, I, there's, there's so many beautiful people out there that, that could be waiting for you or the person, you know, out there. And I love what you said when we, um, my line is always don't hold, uh, I hold on to something until it no longer serves me. So everybody, if it's not serving you to your highest self, it is time to let it go and something beautiful is waiting for you. So this song that we're gonna play, it's called Kiss Me or Leave Me. And yes. Abby, is there, should we just listen to it and then we'll mm -hmm. talk about it after? Or do you, should we just get into it? I just wanna say something. This song Sorry. is an ultimatum. Oh, it's either, yes. either meet me halfway or see me walk away. <laughs> yes, love it, love Kiss it. Kiss me or I'll leave like me. It. <laughs> come to me and kiss me, baby, come to me right now, touch me with your hands. Just 
I feel empowered. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You know? uh, I mean, that was so much. It's it's fun. Of course, it's fun. But there is so it's 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 a woman, or it could be a man, just saying this is this mm -hmm. is what I want. This is what I don't want. And I'm I have to make does it have to take? I love that you said earlier. I have to take action on my dream. Whether my dream is to have this relationship or a job or the life, and it's that that is a take action song. I love it. <laughs> Yes, and, and, and you said something important, you know, it's like what is not serving us or not working for us and in a relationship is what is not serving each other, what is not Aww. working for each other. And Aww. one of the biggest things that I will work to really bring into this new reality is relationships that are fair. Um, mm -hmm. Because we often think about what is right for me. So what is what is right for me is not right for the other person. You know, right. or I want to be right. Why? What about being fair? And I think that mm -hmm. if we start transitioning into, you know what, I'm going to empower myself and, and, and go for what makes me happy, but I'm going to do that also thinking about the others or the mm -hmm. other person. You know, when we think about changing the world, changing it, the world, changing the world for better, uniting with others that have the same cause, and in relationships, it's being with somebody who shares points of views and values, somebody who compliments you as well as you compliment them, a person that you can grow with and that you can uh, motivate or help each other um, in many ways so that we can move from a society that sometimes, again, when you think about it, in suffering, we see ourselves as only being the ones that suffer, and sometimes in relationships, we, keep, we tend to see only what we need, what we want, or how something is affecting us. And when we start looking at the other person as well, and seeing how can we work together on this? How can we improve it? How can we complement each other better? Are we really making each other happy? It's like all of a sudden you're like, wow, you know, I'm not that perfect either. So when we also work on ourselves, as we work on the relationship, everything grows and becomes better. And sometimes like certain partners are not meant to be with us, you know, just like bless mm -hmm. them and, and, and move on and move forward. But there is, a beautiful life waiting for all of us on the other side of what we thought we wanted. Mm, I love, you think of as um, my awakening is actually our awakening. It's everybody's. And as mm. each one of us um, have that courage to step into our truth and, you know, step into like shed to step into the awakening, the whole world literally changes. My, my final question I wanted to squeeze in here was um, if you could just share it, when we do have this awakening or rebirth, you know, do, do the people in our lives start to like, we attract different people too. We, is it, it stretches out to everybody. Yes. We start attracting different people, but when we actually go through the rebirth is when we finally choose to accept and embody who we really are. See oh. in this show, Lisa, my dear beloved Lisa, I'm not, hiding a single part of me. It is the same me that you will encounter at a party, a private mm -hmm. reunion, my home, or uh, anywhere. It, it is the same Abby. There is mm -hmm. no facade. There is no one hiding. I mean, the biggest thing I was hiding was my music. And and now it's embodied. And, and, the, and the beautiful thing is that I believe that God has a plan for me. The, the God and the universe have a plan for this to work out in a way that perhaps Perhaps as a new work out before, perhaps it has. But the beauty of it is when we get to show ourselves to the world in the most authentic light, because that moves mountains, that yes. moves people, that truly inspires. When somebody gives you room to really be yourself, then you feel like you have permission because they are showing you the way. So. My my advice to all of um, those who are listening is, if you want your awakening to go faster, let go of what you're holding on to so tightly. Surrender to the plan of the universe and God. Allow for the signs to show up. Pray, meditate. Uh, do what you have to do to improve yourself. Remember, it's not on somebody else's hands. It's on your hands. You don't get to choose when you go through an awakening, but you do get to choose how you go through your awakening. And last but not least, the sooner you embrace your truth, who you really are, 
and you embody that and present that to the world, the fastest that your rebirth happens because that in and of itself is a rebirth of a new, more authentic you that needs to be introduced to everybody else. Oh, Abby, thank you so much. And as we literally wrap up, I just want to say thank you so much for showing yourself in the most authentic light so that others feel safe to do so as well. And where could they get a hold of you if they would love to just, just reach out to you? Absolutely. They can go to abbyaguilera.com. That is A-B-B-Y, Aguilera, like Christina Aguilera, A-G-U-I-L-E-R-A dot com. They can also find me on Abby Aguilera, hypnotherapist on Facebook, the real Abby Aguilera on Instagram, <laughs> or they can call 323-646-1601. How wonderful. And we will post all those details as well. But always a pleasure. My goodness is going so fast. And I'm going to go listen to your song again. So <laughs> there you go. Ah, thank you. I love it. Ah. Thank you so much, Abby. We'll talk well, soon and everybody else. Re- oh, you're welcome. Everybody remember, show yourself in your most authentic light and shine, shine away. Okay. We'll see you guys Bye, next Lisa, week. Bye-bye. So Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, Abby.